New York City can be tough, especially in those that can't keep up with its frenetic pace. The city demands success. It embraces winners. And for several years, New York has waited for the return of St. John's to Providence. Steve Lavin has had a big role in that happening this season as the Red Storm have responded. They're back in their home court today, a place where they've knocked off five ranked opponents this season. Championship Week is presented by Dick Sporting Goods. As we welcome you back to day two of the Big East Championship presented by American Eagle Outfitters. Will the revival season of St. John's continue? Or will Rutgers disappoint the crowd? The Knights beat Seton Hall yesterday. Seton Hall just beat St. John's last Thursday. Winner moves on to face Syracuse tomorrow in the quarterfinals. Earlier today, it was Connecticut beating Georgetown, South Florida, Cincinnati tonight, along with West Virginia to the defending champs, taking on Marquette at 9 Eastern. With Doris Burke and Fran Fraschilla, I'm Dave Pash. And guys, at times, St. John's has been the talk of college basketball. What a turnaround for the Red Storm. Oh, it really has. Steve Lavin has taken this large group of seniors that haven't had much success, and he's got them believing, and he's particularly got them believing in playing fresher defense and this city dave has embraced that style you have to love it now what they do is it's a fresher half court man zone defense that drives teams crazy but in the six losses that st john's has suffered in the big east they're giving up 50 percent from the field in the half court and you've got to attack st john's in the middle of that defense if you're Mike Rice, not that easy because in the first game, Rutgers had 23 turnovers at Parnaseca Arena. Well, the seniors over the course of the season have been huge for St. John's. And Doris, that was the case with, with Rutgers yesterday, the seniors carrying the Knights, especially in overtime. In a transition year with Mike Rice in his first year, and he turned to those seniors, and he's gotten great leadership and down the stretch of a rivalry game against in-state foe Seton Hall. He turned to those seniors almost exclusively down the stretch as it was time to win he turned to Mike Colburn and James Beatty and Jonathan Mitchell that three puts him up every time Mike Colburn was able to get into the lane he looked for Jonathan Mitchell who hit big shot after big shot all three guys will have to be as good today and Mitchell featured in our star watch for Rutgers along with Dwight Hardy the Big East most improved player this year well, what you love about Jonathan Mitchell is remember he's won state championships national championships and then transferred that leadership ability to Rutgers and Mike Rice. Hardy went from reserve to Big East first team. He's a handful. The starting five for Rutgers. You talked about the seniors, Doris, Beatty, Mitchell, and Colburn. Their best player down the road might be Baruta, a freshman. He was in foul trouble yesterday. Still had 12 points in 24 minutes against Seton Hall. And for St. John's, 7-1 at Madison Square Garden, the long loss to Syracuse. D.J. Kennedy taking a secondary role, but has had some big games. He was one of their leading scorers last year. Hardy, Horn, Coley, a freshman, and Justin Brownlee who had the game-winning shot against Rutgers as uh, St. John's beat him by two points during the regular season meeting. Carmelo Anthony trade to the New York Knicks. St. John's would be the story in terms of sports in college basketball this year. They're still up there because of the teams they've beaten here. Duke, Notre Dame, Georgetown, Connecticut, and Pittsburgh all here at the Garden. And they take down Rutgers today and set up a rematch with the Orange, the only team to win here at Madison Square Garden against the Red Storm this season. What you're going to see is relentless pressure on every pass of the ball. Someone is going to run at Rutgers. It's important to get it inside. A block by Brownlee on Baruta as they went to him on the opening possession. Rutgers one game under 500. They're the 13th seed. An overtime victory over Seton Hall yesterday. They scored the final seven points in that contest. Here's Paris Horn with the jumper. He's another guy taking a backseat role this year with the new coaching staff, but has had some big moments for St. John's. 
Take a look at this pressure door. It's going to be some 2 2 1. You'll see run and jump. They throw the kitchen sink at you defensively. Mitchell. And we're going to call an offensive foul. First foul in the game. As you look at Steve Lavin, who in seven years at UCLA led them to five sweet 16s, hoping to have a deep run with St. John's in the NCAA tournament after a terrific regular season. They are the five seed here, the Big East Championship break, 18th in the country. And remember, you've got a Rutgers team that wants to switch through four positions. One through four, they'll switch every screen. At the five spot, they won't. Here's DJ Kennedy, 15 points per game last year, under 11 this year, but he has embraced the role that Steve Lavin has asked him to have as he stepped on the baseline there. First year for Mike Rice as well. But he's familiar with uh, New York City having played at Fordham, graduate, Pittsburgh native, 42 years of age. Well, he was not happy with the way Rutgers handled this pressure back in early February, so I'm going to be interested to see how well they moved the ball. One of the things they've talked about, Fran, is basically, as you see, the nice little pitch, little entry, and then pitch. Basically, no offense, Fran. That's going to be a travel. One of the things Rutgers talked about as a staff, the, the turnovers bothered them, certainly. They want to attack the middle of the zone, and from there, you've got to have playmakers. Now, who they put in that position will be an interesting one, maybe Jonathan Mitchell, but that middle area of St. John's zone is where they want to try to work. Rutgers has won two Big East tournament games only once. That was back in 1998. And they won yesterday and trying to get to the quarterfinals. That 98 season was back when they didn't have as many teams in the league, so they made it to the semifinals. That was the only time they won multiple games at a Big East championship. Didn't even qualify in 2007, 2008, but Rice trying to turn things around as Bromley is way short with that jumper. Here's Mitchell from the corner, and Rutgers with an early one-point lead. He hit 47 threes during the regular season and put Rutgers on top late in regulation with a three yesterday before Hazell sent the game to overtime with a three with a second to go. St. John's won 20 games, 12 in the Big East. First time they had won 12 league contents since 2000 in their first 21 season in eight years. The putback by Poli. Well, if you haven't seen this guy play, he's only a freshman. He's a jumping jack. I think he should be playing volleyball the way he gets up. But an outstanding rookie year with all these seniors. Now, what makes this defense so hard? They're long, they're athletic, they're versatile by position, and they cover area. Beatty's three might have been partially blocked by Brownlee. St. John's in transition. Red Storm have protected the ball beautifully this year, leading the Big East in turnover margin and a wonderful scoop shot by Dwight Hardy, averaging 24 points per game his last 11. He is terrific at attacking bodies and adjusting to get shots up. A steal by Brownlee. Great look to Hardy underneath and able to bank it in way above the square. Well, his first name is not Dwight. It's Playground Legend because that's what they've called him for the last eight, nine years. But what a transition he has made to Division One. Came off the bench for the most part last year, but one of the adjustments Coach Lavin made was to put him in the starting lineup. And again, other guys taking on lesser roles, and it's worked for him. Six straight points, but that ends here as Coburn gets to the bucket for the layup. Oh, that's a nice look ahead. Horn can't scoop it in. Out of there with it is James Beatty. Who had five rebounds, five steals, 12 points yesterday. And a foul called on Baruta, his first, second on Rutgers as we go to the studio and say hello to Mike Tirico. All right, Dave, just want to keep it. Well, Mike, you haven't missed anything here. No scoring since we left you as Miller gets it blocked from behind by Hardy out of bounds. It will stay Rutgers basketball. 
Uh, if this is your Dane Miller right now, you got to have two hands on this basketball. No time for showtime. Take a look. No way. You got to go strong to the rim on that. There's a lot of consequences here. Like there might have been a foul, oh, too. Yeah. Yeah, no, That's all the more reason to have two, because now you have a chance at an old-fashioned three-point play. It's one of those little things that you talk about with players. And you got to put the theatrics in their back pocket. Brownlee gets the rebound after the Mike Poole miss. Poole did not score yesterday. Evans down court. And a timeout by Rutgers as St. John's leads by five. Evans had 19 points, 10 rebounds in the Big East tournament in a game against Connecticut last year and off to a good start today for St. John's with that basket. A tough ticket to get here in New York City with the way St. John's has played at the Garden. Red Storm on top of Rutgers by five. Forget strolling on down Broadway and taking it a play. We've got St. John's in the garden with expectations on their shoulder. Sean Evans sprinting the floor and Dwight Hardy puts it on the money. Early on, Hardy has four points to lead the way for St. John's. Mitchell with three for Rutgers. Winner will play Syracuse tomorrow. Well, there's Rutgers trying to get the ball to the middle. Malik Booth picked up a foul. First on St. John's as uh, Austin Carroll comes in to replace Austin Johnson. St. John's is going to the NCAA tournament first time since 2002, but that one was actually vacated because of NCAA rules violation. So you have to go back to 2000 when St. John's went, and they also won the Big East championship that year. Maruta in the lane can't get it to go. Here's Booth racing down floor for St. John's, unable to finish. Evans fouled on the way back up. And Mike Rice and Sense asking for the whistle on both ends of the floor. Looked like a pretty good block, friends. Two on Mitchell now, guys. And it's a tough angle, really, to make that call because the middle official, Earl Walton, can't really tell verticality from where he is. And that's what Mike Rice is asking right now. I had a chance last summer to go to the Big 12 officiating camp, and it was an eye-opener in terms of where these guys need to be in terms of positioning on the floor when they make their calls. So I'm glad I'm not coaching Doris because I'd be dangerous with all that knowledge I have <laughs> of officiating right now. Well, it's, you know, same it can be set a block charge. How you, yep. What angle you're viewing that at, it, it goes a long way to determine what the call is. That's right. You've got to be in shape to be an official, boy, because you're sprinting. These yep. athletes are getting faster and faster. Evans one out of two at the line. Colburn with the kick out to Carroll and a three. Boy, you like that. Love this kid. He missed a month with a knee injury. Came back. He rehabbed. And his dad is in the building today. John Carroll, the former coach of the Boston Celtics, former coach at Duquesne. And you know, he got hurt in early January, and they thought it was going to be a four to six week injury, but he came back in about 26 days. Hardy off the inbound pass. No, Evans trying to get to the loose ball. Corralled by Coburn. Here's Baruta down low, slotted away by Evans. Booth has it. Ahead to Horn, he'll take it in. Score and a foul. And he made the right decision, Fran. He had no choice. The defender never, ever gave him a choice. The block on Wena and Baruta does a nice job, but I'll tell you what, how about the patience of that defender not to bite, and he allows the back defender, because they never stopped him for any, he had to go right at it. It was a little two-on-one. You could say he should have given it up. I thought it was the right play. Uh, you know what? Offensive players in transition, as long as the defender is not legally set, you got to invite contact yeah. and not shy away from it. That's a good example right there by Paris Horn. How about Malik Booth? He's been an energizer, buddy, the last couple minutes. 
Now he's another guy, you know, we, we talked about this a couple times already, used to starting. The new coaching staff comes in, they make some changes. Guys that were starting are coming off the bench, taking secondary roles, but they responded to that. Well, Brandon, I mean, that's coaching, right? You've got to yep. be able to, to sell the guys who were starters and stars a year ago on taking a lesser role. It's not an easy job. No, I, I, exactly. And I don't know that they have an NBA player out here, so everybody has bought into just let's win. You know, forget about how many minutes. Let's just all win. Jumper with about five on the shot clock by Poole goes. Rutgers back within four. They go right down to Evans and Johnson getting on the floor and they're going to call Evans for a foul. We saw that in the first game and a foul wasn't called. Here it is on Evans, his first and the second on the Red Storm. Yeah, this, you know, this is one of those defenses, guys, you call it a feast or famine defense because they caused you to not run your offense and they disrupt what you're trying to do. But if you move the ball smartly versus this defense and spread the defense out, you can actually get great opportunities to score. And you mentioned the point, Doris, getting it to the middle. See, it, it's now that it looks like they're man, they're constantly pressuring. Carroll underneath can't get it to go, trying to get it back. Horn has it for St. John's. Booth leaves it for Hardy, an open three. Back rimmed it, and up high for the board is Miller. Hardy 0 for 3 now from behind the arc. White Hardy, the fourth leading scorer in the Big East at 18 points per game. And we got a timeout with St. John's leading by four. Paris Horn, the leading scorer right now for the Red Storm with five points. The hang, the hit, and the foul. It's another perfect. Back in New York City, St. John's on top of Rutgers by four with 11.42 to go. And now a story that is apparent. It's hard to listen to it and certainly hard to tell. Jim Carr, it's a story that's known in the Big East. And his two and a half son, Braid, has been dealing with epilepsy at cardiac arrest. He's been in hospital here in New York. And reports are that he's improving and may be able to go back to a hospital in New Jersey. What Carr did yesterday before Rutgers played its game against Seton Hall at the team meeting in the morning, he broke out a piece of paper and read the timeline of his son Braden's medical history to his team and said, time is important. All you want is more. We've got a chance to get more time today if we win. They did. They beat Seton Hall, and here they are playing St. John. He kept saying 2 4 zero, zero. That's how many seconds are in a game, and it's how many times Braden has been written off. He said, just fight like my son has fought. Shot clock down to three. As Coburn is bailed out by a foul on Booth. That's two on him. Think about this. The biggest win of the year for them was against Villanova, and that coach was not there. And what did every gentleman on that team do? They texted their coach yep. to let him know. They were fighting for him. Well, Jimmy was on the old staff with Freddie Hill, but more importantly, the Kennedy family, not the Kennedys in, uh, in Massachusetts, but the Kennedy, Rob Kennedy, and they run the Hoop Group basketball camps, and Jimmy Carr's been a big part of that. Mike Rice used to run the camp and got out of college coaching for three years, and that's how he developed all these East Coast connections, and it's already paying off in recruiting. So this is a family atmosphere being developed at Rutgers right now. And Coburn gets the Knights within two of St. John's at the 11-minute mark here in the first. Now, Rutgers a little different. They play inside the three-point line, and they will switch. All come-togethers. Brownlee floating through the lane, gets the bounce for his first field goal. You mentioned, Dave, the way Steve Lavin has juggled his lineup. Justin Brownlee only started three games a year ago. Only played about 15 minutes a game. He's now their second leading scorer. And has been a starter throughout the year. Miller's three-pointer won't go. Into the backcourt to Coburn. Poole will raise and hit a two. Now, we didn't see much of Mike Poole yesterday, but he was a high school teammate of Gil Baruta, played for Danny Hurley over at St. Benedict's, and he's given him a nice offensive lift at times throughout the year, only a freshman. 
Rutgers has a good recruiting class coming in. They've also got a guy redshirting this year, Kadeem Jack, from here in New York City, Rice High School in Queens. Kimber Walker knows Kadeem Jack quite well, same high school. Here's Burrell, sixth man of the year in the Big East Conference. Shot clock at seven. Kennedy has an attempt at a shot yet, and I have to here with a timer at two. He's stripped. And shot clock violation. Rutgers ball. It'll be Rutgers ball. Championship week continues later tonight on ESPN2. The Northeast Championship, Robert Morris, which was in the NCAA tournament last year with Mike Rice as their coach, taking on Long Island, followed by the Big Sky Championship, Montana, Northern Colorado. Well, Jimmy Ferry's done a great job at Long Island University. They used to play in the old Paramount Theater over on Flatbush Avenue, but they actually have a gymnasium now, and they'll be the host team tonight at the Northeast Conference. Can they beat Robert Morris? Mike Rice took them to two NCAA tournaments. Good hands by Brownlee, and what a save. Excellent bounce ahead to Hardy. His defender fell down. Hardy, and a foul. To me, this is much about the defense as the offense. They're doing a heck of a job denying Baruta touches because he is a capable guy, long arms, athletic, the hands. Franny, you've got to admire guys who just keep reaching and slapping. Deflections are so important. Absolutely. You know, we were talking to us before the game. This St. John's has a great finish there by Dwight Hardy. You talk about inviting contact, but St. John's reminds me defensively of some of those old Georgetown teams because they have the depth to foul you and be able to withstand that because they can go deeper into their bench. Chris, Chris Mullen told me in our game on Thursday, St. John's at Seton Hall, he goes, Georgetown fouled you every trip. <laughs> <laughs> but they couldn't call them all is what we used to tell the referees. With that said about St. John's, how far can they go in the NCAA tournament, do you guys think? I, you know, I think they're a tough team to match up with, especially if they win a first-day game and the, an opponent has only 24 hours to prepare for them in that second game. Open three for Coburn, short. And then a St. John's foul, 15 foul on the Red Storm and on Kennedy is first. And Dave, I'll give you another football example. It's, this is not unlike the zone blitz where it's all out and if you don't handle this pressure, you're going to take a four shot like Mike Coburn did. So you've got to solve this defense with good ball movement and picking your spots to attack. Fundamentals, fake a pass to make a pass. Look somebody off before you make it. Get the Solid pressure. with the ball. Yep. Loose ball, Baruta on the floor, able to keep it alive. And now Beatty, too strong from three-point land, but Rutgers keeps possession. They'll try another long one. Pull short. Baruta keeps it alive. Eventually, Hardy has it for St. John's, leading by five. And Horn throws it away, trying to hit Kennedy on the wing. That's four turnovers by St. John's already. They're the Big East leader in turnover margin. Remember last year we saw him, a lot of times they'd come down one, one or two passes and they'd shoot a three. They, they shot the fewest amount of threes. They were much more patient on offense this year. One of the reasons why their turnovers are down. Well, I think the, de the defense and the rebounding were always good under Norm Roberts and the toughness factor was there as well. I think this that's probably been the area of greatest improvement. No question Dave on the offensive end. Mitchell no. And another St. John's foul, 15 foul. They're going to get Coley for his first. And, and what, I, what I like about what Steve Lavin has done is he has acknowledged on a number of occasions that Norm Roberts left him a group of hungry seniors yeah. ready to win. And Steve and his coaching staff have taken it the next step and really gotten his team to believe in itself. There's that pressure. Every pass is contested. Baruta down low, put it on the floor and traveled. Probably should have just went right up, right? Elected not to, and he traveled. Here's lunch for Doris and Fran. 7.49 to go in the first. I'll be right back.
Today's telecast available in 3D on ESPN 3D. Brought to you by Sony. Every game of the Big East Championship in 3D. Rutgers trailing St. John's by five as the Red Storm are holding the Knights to 26% shooting. Oh, and it's all about defense, Dave, and we've talked about the buy-in factor by these players to this coaching staff. And what they do is they pressure at every opportunity, both in the half court and in the full court. It's harassment, constant harassment, which, by the way, isn't bad if you're playing in Manhattan. And it has really been a big reason why St. John's has had some success. And everybody talks about having Gene Cady with Steve Lavin, who is a Hall of Fame type coach. But Mike Dunlap, the assistant coach you see in the background, Former national champion at Metro State in Division II, George Carl's assistant with the Denver Nuggets, coached professionally in Australia, and he is a coach among coaches. You talk about UB Brown, Dean Smith, Mike Dunlap clinics are well attended because of his knowledge of the game. Now you can watch one practice with St. John's and understand what a job this guy does with the scout, handling the young guys, which is important, keeping their attention. He's extraordinary. And Sean Miller's done, I've done a fantastic job at Arizona, guys, but remember all the craziness going on there with Lute Olson. He probably should have had that job done lap there. Uh, credit Steve Lavin for having the foresight to hire a guy, Dave, that uh, it's almost like hiring a defensive coordinator. I said this to you. He's been out of coaching for a while. He can coach and, and lab. you got to hire as guys better or as good as you, no question. Somebody who raises your level. Lab confident enough to do that. Of an offensive foul on Hardy, his first and the sixth by St. John's. There's the ball pressure. High arcing jumper rolls around and drops for Robert Lumpkins. St. John's quickly back down floor, but Rutgers in position and they get a steal. Coburn will stop top. Too strong with a three. Rutgers struggling shooting the ball from behind the arc on 25% so far in the game. Terrell faces the double team. Hardy able to collect but can't score. Brownlee out to Kennedy and he'll slow it down. What does it tell you that they're doing on the defensive end that they're within three shooting that percentage? Tim Higgins calls a foul and it's going to be on Coburn of Rutgers his first. Well, Steve Lavin, as you look at the last 11 games, they've gone with the sneakers and no tie look. Originally to, to raise money, coaches versus cancer. They beat Duke. And so Lav said, well, let's keep wearing it. Plus, I had to wear a tie sitting next to Brent Musburger for the last seven years. Rock and or a sweater. Air Force Brent doesn't wear a tie anymore. <laughs> yeah, or a sweater. <laughs> Rutgers a little different. They'll play inside that line, and they want St. John's. They're trying to take away any kind of good penetration. Offensive foul on Burrell. You better be careful he doesn't get a technical. He just turned around and shouted something at Jim Burr. First on him, 17 foul, but the player control foul, so there's no free throws here for Rutgers. And Burrell will take a seat. Last time we saw him, was committing a hard foul at the end of a loss to Seton Hall after Steve Lavin got ejected. A lot of people thought there'd be a rematch today, but Seton Hall knocked off by Rutgers yesterday. That's the feel of yesterday's game. It wasn't a neat game, some poor play, but they hung around and hung around. Might have been some contact on the three-point attempt as uh, it was way off the mark. No foul called, and it's St. John's ball. Well, this pressure defense, even in the half court, forces you to shoot the ball quickly. And one of the reasons Rutgers' three-point percentage is down is because they close quickly and they get to the shooter. St. John's no points in the last three and a half minutes, but Rutgers really not taking advantage. Hardy draws a foul on Lumpkin, 17 fouls, so this will be a one-and-one one for Dwight Hardy. 
Beatty back into the game. What a story Dwight Hardy has been, senior from the Bronx. And the last time St. John's had a Big East Player of the Year winner, it was Walter Berry in 86. He had Chris Mullen win it three times, sharing it a couple with Chris Mullen, or with uh, Patrick Ewing. But Hardy was a legitimate candidate for Player of the Year. He ends up making first team and most improved player award winner. Steve Lavin went back to the summer when he first took the job and he was in the gym and he's just watching Dwight Hardy shoot the basketball and he's looking and looking and he said the that, more that I watched That might be a violation him, by the way but we'll go we'll get it. Probably was in the fall. Let me say it was in the fall. Whatever yeah, it was. was in the fall. He's watching him shoot and he said boy this guy can he can stroke the basketball and, and he said I you know at that point I made a decision he was going to be a featured part of my offense. At the game winning shot against Pittsburgh here, one of five ranked teams St. John's beat at the Garden, one of six ranked teams overall that Johnny's beat. Offensive rebound and another missed putback, this one by Austin Johnson. Rutgers miserable right now offensively, but only down four with five to go here in the first half. St. John's without a field goal in the last 420. Rutgers, meanwhile, shooting 25% from the field. Rutgers in his own, not that switching man to man. Kennedy, 4 3. I think they're better when DJ Kennedy is aggressive and looking to score the basketball. And I think that's the one Achilles heel St. John's has. Is even in that winning streak, they relied so much on Dwight Hardy that you know, that's going to end at some point. And D.J. Kennedy's had a tremendous St. John's career. Preseason second team all Big East, but mentioned that his scoring was down, but he had some huge games, including 20 points, 11 rebounds, and the victory here against the ranked Connecticut team. Three in and out by Lumpkins. Evans has it ahead to Hardy. Hardy finds Horn from the corner. And cleared by Miller, who averages six rebounds per game. Teams met once during the regular season. St. John's won at home by only two. That was just a few days after their win over Duke. As Austin Johnson is fouled here. Now, DJ Kennedy, one of the most versatile players in the entire country, is a stat stuffer. He can score it, he can board it. And when he's aggressive, providing some punch along with Dwight Hardy, this team will be a tough out. The Southpaw is money. There you are. All right, Mike, 3.54 left here in the first half with St. John's on top by seven. We told you about some of the Red Storm big wins. We should also mention some of their losses early in the year. Surprising defeats even for a St. John's program that have been struggling. Losses to Fordham and St. Bonaventure. But after that, St. John's went on a tear. Didn't even feel like the same season. Won nine of their last 11 games. Went from 6-12 and 12 in the Big East last year to 12-6. and six. This year, three wins against top 10 teams. Highest ranking in over a decade. At number 15 last week, they're currently 18. First 20-win season in eight years. And their first 12-win season in conference play. Since 2000, they also had a stretch of seven straight wins against Big East teams before the loss at Seton Hall last Thursday. Well, let's, let's face it, Steve Lavin was a former colleague of ours, but I got to know him when he was coaching at UCLA, and he's got the slick back hair, and people, I think, misinterpreted that as Hollywood, but those of us who know him know he's got a tremendous magnetism. It's already paid off in a great recruiting class, and he got that team to believe halfway through the season even when they were struggling and that's a, that takes some work because this team had been beaten down for three and a half years. No, there's no question. Yeah. You're right. His persona is different. He's, he's a warm, open guy. Uh, you can see how appealing he would be sitting in, in front of a recruit's family in a living room. There's no question about that. Hardy fouled on the way to the basket. Doris and I were in Portland a couple weeks ago, and Michael Holton, who now does some broadcasting out there, used to work with Steve Lavin at UCLA, and his comment to us was, if I had to pick one guy to give a speech before a big game to go out there and win it, it's Steve Lavin. And think about Lav's record in the NCAA tournament. He is 10-1 and one yes. in the first and second round of the NCAA tournament. He knows how to get a team... And he's motivated to go out and play a big game as Hardy, who has eight points, will shoot two. I just miss him talking about the Big Ten. You know, monsters at a midway, Lambeau <laughs> Field, frozen tundra. Share the sugar. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you this. He's told this guy, he said, I want you to lose yourself. 
in the defense. Be aggressive. Rebound the basketball. The offense will come. Just lose yourself in the details of defense. If you play in this league, Doris, as you know quite well, Dave, if you don't have a defensive mentality, Correct. you are in trouble because every game, as Mike Rice will tell you, is a rock fight. Rutgers ball down eight, three and a half to go here in the first. See, they show the zone, but it's an aggressive zone. Someone's always coming at the basketball. Three-pointer by Coburn, and Rutgers really struggling shooting the ball. 23% from the field. Two of ten from behind the arc. Syracuse awaits the winner of this game. The first quarterfinal matchup will be Pittsburgh and UConn. Connecticut knocking off Georgetown 79-62 in our first game. Emma Walker at 28 points and six boards in that contest. Hardy fouled by Poole, so it'll be a one and one for Hardy. 19 foul. You know, Dwight Hardy went out to Indian Hills Junior College in Ottumwa, Iowa. And I'm going to tell you, there's nothing to do out there. <laughs> and, 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 he, and he played two years for a guy named Jeff Kidder. And Dwight Bikes from Marquette yes. was a teammate. And all they did was stay in the gym basically for two years. This kid is a self-made player, even though he had that schoolyard reputation. As a, as a great player in the Bronx and you admire that because he ran into dead ends in high school in prep school and then seemingly in junior college and Norm Roberts brought him back to New York and Steve Lavin has take this taken this flower and he's groomed. This is the second free throw Hardy had 34 against Villanova. Three 30 point games in the month of February. Also had a 28 point game against Marquette, 26 against Duke. Do you think he's going to like being called the flower? <laughs> <laughs> you know, his nickname is the baddest man on the planet in the, in the playgrounds in New York. I think that fits him better. Beatty to the basket. Says, I can't hit one from outside. I'll take it in and try to get a three point play. They're hanging tough. Man. I tell you what, they can't get a great deal of separation, St. John's. And I tell you what, Dunlop is like the great defenders on the floor. If he his defense gets scored upon, he's mad, but a good, strong drive. And you've got to be able to make plays, man. I think that's maybe the most important thing against this length and athleticism. Do you have the kinds of players who can make individual plays? First points of the game for Beatty as Brownlee picks up his first foul, 19 foul. St. John's by six. The first meeting between these two teams was played in the 50s, so it's no surprise this is where we are with two to go. Horn can't score inside. Rutgers looking for a fast break. Bucket, Hardy called for the block. Earl Walton almost went down as well. The official both appear to be okay as Beatty will go back to the line. Now that's a smart play by James Beatty because watch, see Hardy's backing up. He really can't get into position as long as he's moving. Now watch our Walton. He, he, the, the poor cheerleaders behind him were called for the block too. Substitution ready to come in the league booth for St. John's and free throws coming up for Beatty. Got the first one, so Hardy will get a breather here. 11 points so far in the game. James Beatty, a senior from Wilmington, North Carolina. Had a good first day against Seton Hall at 12 points, handful of rebounds, handful of steals. Average close to 10 points per game in conference action. Unable to get that free throw. Rutgers back within five, though, inside two minutes to go in the first. If you're Mike Rice right now, you're thinking about keeping it close because the pressure will move to St. John's in the second half if they don't blow Rutgers out. They're expected to win this game and advance. Baruta just got called for a second foul. And we talked, guys, about the big wins for St. John's, but we've also seen them at times play down to the level of competition. 
Seton Hall last week, Rutgers earlier in the season. We showed you the losses to Fordham and St. Bonaventure. Well, this, you look back on those two games, I think that's sort of, you know, these guys adjusting to the system. And one thing Steve said about those two losses, Fran, he wasn't, he was upset, obviously, but the one thing he looked at his coaches the next day and he said, listen, we are showing improvement. I really believe we're going to be okay. And that was sort of the turning point. He didn't lose faith. The staff didn't lose faith. And you present that face to these guys and he's gotten them to buy in. Oh, that's his mindset. Jonathan Mitchell back on the floor for Rutgers hasn't played a whole lot this half because of the foul trouble. He was the hero yesterday. And Rutgers win over Seton Hall. Got three points, two fouls so far today. And here's Mitchell with a three-point try right on the money. And Rutgers back within four. He's close to 40% from out there, so he's a weapon. And a four-point play to beat Villanova at the rack during the regular season. Well, this zone has gotten St. John's flummoxed a little bit. Well, if you're Mike Rice, if you're, your team's shooting 28% and you're down four you've just, in a road game, yeah, essentially. They, you've just given the halftime speech. And traveling is called. Rutgers can get it down to two, maybe one. This is a possession right here for Rutgers. You want to be really good and strong with the ball. Do not shoot it quick. Because unless you get a great shot, you want to try to get this clock as close to zero as you can, knowing that you're going to go in. So you got to be careful here. I would hold the basketball and shrink the rest of this first half. And then they'll give your speech, Dave, at halftime. Here's Mitchell. Just had the three. Good job by Booth to break up the pass. It will stay Rutgers' ball with 15 on the shot clock. Nine turnovers by St. John's, uncharacteristically not handling their business, and just 28 points, nine field goals. Shot clock at 10. Here's Mitchell. Can't get it to go. Rebound Evans. St. John's can hold for the final shot if it pleases. They have a timeout, but they're not going to use it. That timeout will go away. Booth strip. Here's Coburn. Mitchell did not get it off. But Rutgers, despite 27% shooting, within four. Mitchell had six points in only nine minutes because of the foul trouble. Dwight Hardy had 11 to lead St. John's. Beth Moen standing by with Steve Lavin. Thank you very much, Dave. Well, one more turnover than field goals in that first half. Steve, how do you get your rhythm back offensively? Well, it's a classic Big East, uh, not classic as in classic sports channel, but uh, a bit of a grinder, uh, not a uh, pretty game to watch. I'd say it's an eyesore uh, probably for both staffs. Uh, we just got to use better judgment, uh, attack the zone more effectively, get the ball to the high post short corner, distort their zone more with some screening and flashing behind the zone. And um, other than that, uh, it's about playing hard. It's Big East. You know, we got 20 more minutes. Just got to play our fannies off. Thank you very much, Steve. Take care. What made Coach Lavin an excellent analyst makes him a good interview at halftime. Despite his team's struggles, Dwight Hardy had a good first half, 11 points. St. John's, though, up just four. Cisco halftime report, Doug, Jay, Mike Tarico. All right, Dave, thank you. Back to the garden for the second half momentarily. We welcome to the Cisco halftime report. We don't have to do a comment from these guys on the game because Daddy Lav just did it for us. It was ideal. My well, God. He, ran, he kind of ran out of, he ran out of Lavin. This exactly. He's looking at Beth. He's like, come on, give me one more here, quick. I'll go to the Jersey guy first as we're watching the State University of New Jersey. They played ugly. They played poorly. They looked uh, frustrated by St. John's good defense, yet they're right here within four. Well, really struggling from the three-point line, three of 11, going against the zone. I still think they don't need to be
content with taking three-point jump shots, getting to the teeth of the defense, start trying to get shots at the rim. But this is a team also, if you're Mike Rice, you're in a good position here. You're only down by a short amount of points. And if you remember the last time these two teams played at Carneseca Hall, they had 23 turnovers. Good job by the Scarlet Knights taking care of the basketball so far with only four turnovers in the first half. Thankfully, this thing will be over soon. Good thing, though, for... Uh, <laughs> Oh, I mean, I mean this, this is an, it's an ugly basketball yeah, game. Is, I is. mean, uh, the good thing, though, or the important thing for St. John's head in the second half, you win this game, you're going to face Syracuse, you're going to face a better zone against better athletes and a team that can score in transition. He's right. They do need to execute better against it. Each team had nine field goals. They combined 18 of 54 in the first half, so not a pretty half, but St. John's 20 minutes away from playing Syracuse in the second round, third round in the Garden, I should say. When we come back... UConn with a strong performance in Kemba Walker, a stud in game one. Highlights coming up. I am New York, young man. This week on this court, the stakes like my skyscrapers are higher, the glare like my light brighter. If you're afraid, you'll fail. But stand tall like me and you will prevail. Here in the Big East Championship. Welcome back to Championship Week presented by Dick Sporting Goods from Madison Square Garden in New York City. It's the 2011 Big East Championship presented by American Eagle Outfitters. St. John's trying to advance to play Syracuse in the quarterfinals tomorrow, but got some work to do. Rutgers within four. They passed Doris Burke, Fran Priscilla, and Rutgers down four despite shooting under 30% from the field. How's that happen? Mike Rice said yesterday, any win is a work of art. And they are working hard. They're defending well. And the offensive rebound to the tune of eight. They've just got to capitalize on that, Fran. And there's a reason they're not shooting well. Well, exactly right. The St. John's defense is built on constant harassment. You're talking about challenging shots, ball pressure. And here's a good example. Take a look. Very few shots have been unchallenged today for the Scarlet Knights. Someone is always flying at you. But if you move the ball quickly and well, enough and you find the open opportunities then you've got a chance to put some points on the board if you're Mike Rice team. Our first half stats brought to you by American Eagle. Just 27 percent shooting as mentioned for Rutgers. St. John's dominating in the paint. Ten turnovers but only Rutgers two points off those giveaways. Twelve less field goal attempts for St. John. So They've got to clean up here, tighten up here in the second half. We, we saw them last Thursday, and they did not look sharp, as you might expect a team in the early part of March to look. Well, lost by double figures at Seton Hall, won their final regular season game on campus against South Florida, as Brownlee is able to avoid stepping in the baseline and or traveling and put it in. Mike, Mike Rice thought that he slid that foot, and Baruta did not want to pick up another foul. Second field goal for Brownlee. Hardy, the leading scorer with 11. Jonathan Mitchell has six to lead Rutgers, but played only 11 minutes because of foul trouble in that first half. Mitchell was the hero yesterday in Rutgers' first round win over Seton Hall. Beatty from the corner gets Rutgers within three. Four three point basket for the Knights, just one by St. John. time Rutgers won multiple games in a Big East tournament was 1998. That's the only time they've done that. Here's Brownlee. Five straight points for St. John's is Brownlee. Now he and Hardy have proven capable guys and that's if this thing stays tight. Steve Lavin has run his offense through Hardy and Brownlee. And scoring baskets means they can set up that three-quarter court pressure. And what that does is it milks time off the shot clock. Oh, nice show. Beatty just hit a three from that spot. Horn in his grill right now, and Beatty turned it over. Holy ahead to Horn. Leaves it for Kennedy, who's fouled by Beatty. First on... 
Beatty. Free throws coming up for Kennedy. St. John's talks an awful lot about multiple extra defenders. There's five, Fran, and they talk about that sideline being their help. And their priority defensively is keeping you on one side of the floor. And look at him. He just pressures up Paris Horn and all that pressure paying dividends. Thank you, partner. DJ Kennedy at Madison Square Garden this year shoots 57% from the field and averages 12 points per game. Just about everybody in the St. John's roster, their numbers go up here at the Garden. They've beaten Duke here, Notre Dame, Georgetown, Connecticut, and Pitt. Their only loss at the Garden this year. 17-point defeat to Syracuse two months ago. One of the players said that there's a slight breeze at the left basket uh, away from their bench. And I coached here, and I never noticed it, but you get familiar with the floor, and it helps. Here's Beatty again for three. His second triple of the half. Rutgers back within five. Brownlee. This is the three. Dane Miller able to clear for Rutgers. He's got five boards. Another three by Beatty. It's a two-point game. It's mostly a St. John's crowd, but you can hear the fans from Jersey coming alive now. Uh, just like in the second half of a tight ball game yesterday against Seton Hall, it's the seniors making plays. Mr. Beatty stepping up and making shots. Back-to-back -back threes, one from the top of the key, one from the deep corner. Mike Rice is fired up, but as he goes to the sideline, he says, focus, guys, focus. We still got a long way to go. There it is. Keep your mind locked in. Shot of the Lincoln Tunnel from Jersey to New York City. The last time Rutgers visited New York, playing St. John's on its campus at Carneseca Arena February 2nd. Rutgers hung in there and turned Justin Bromley despite a broken left thumb with the game-winning basket. Miller, last shot comes up short. St. John's wins it by two. Brownlee had a fiberglass splint on that broken left thumb, but it didn't affect his shot there. As you see Luke Carnesecca looking on, he's really enjoyed watching St. John's play this year. Hall of Famer, longtime coach of the Johnnies. And boy, Rutgers with three threes in the first half. They've got three already this half. Beatty is three, four, three. Well, the last two threes, one's come in transition, the other off of an inside out. So they've been able to move the ball before St. John's can close. Winner advances to the quarters to play Syracuse. If it's Rutgers, the Knights took Syracuse to overtime up at the Dome during the regular season as that is tipped in by Hardy for his first point since intermission. That second jump, boy, if you can get off your feet fast, that second jump, that's huge. Here's Mitchell. Boy, he makes such an impact. They need him on the floor. He only played about half of the first stanza because of foul trouble. You know what you love about him? He's so versatile because he's not really a power forward, not really a small forward. They move him around in the offense, but he's crafty around the rim. Mitchell, the transfer from Florida, was a true freshman on that championship team in 07. Rebound here by Beatty. And Rutgers can tie or take the lead. Their last lead was three to two as Mitchell has called for the offensive foul. No basket. It's the third personal on Jonathan Mitchell. Did you take him out, friend? Yeah. Yep, he's gonna take him out. I wouldn't take him out for too long. He's a senior. He may be playing in his last game, but I think you want him just to gather himself, make sure he doesn't pick up a quick fourth foul. They took Baruta out, too. Baruta hasn't done a whole lot today. Over four from the field, two fouls, and he's been a key guy the last half of the Big East campaign for Rutgers. Beatty has brought him back with his three-point shooting. Brownlee able to get the handle, can't score on Miller. Out to Hardy. Horn lost 
to Brownlee scoops and scores. He just picked up the loose chains. Rutgers was very close to coming up with that ball. And a St. John's foul, it's first in the half. St. John's foul is on Paris Horn. That's a second on Paris Horn. Rutgers hanging in there in the second round game here in New York City, down four to St. John. All right, Mike, keeping an eye on all the games going on during Championship Week presented by Dick Sporting Goods. We look at how the Big East teams have done. A journey to the brackets brought to you by Dove Men Care. has had a terrific Big East tournament so far. Cincinnati, a hot team, including two wins over Georgetown. West Virginia looking to become the first three-peat champs, and Syracuse did it in 05-06. It's always fun when you have a guy that plays so well in this environment, the bright lights of Madison Square Garden, whether it's a Jerry McNamara, a Deshaun Butler, a Walter Berry. So many guys have made their mark on this court. Here it's a four point game Rutgers shot 27 percent in the first half 100 percent here in the second half 4 4 when the more of those bubble bursts Nebraska's bubble bursts will Colorado's the more you know you think of those 11 teams which most Big East coaches thought no way are we getting 11 boy the more likely it becomes you think Marquette still needs to win tonight or are the Golden Eagles in I think they're in and that would be 11. So Villanova doesn't get hurt despite its five and ten finish. Maybe we'll see it. Yeah, their shooting gets hurt. In and out for Johnson. He will go to the line though. Second team foul on St. John's and on Evans his second. You know when you're building a program I look at Austin Johnson a young guy that lost a lot of weight and he's gotten stronger and better players are going to come into this program while he's still here. But it's guys like this that slide down to the seventh eighth ninth tenth spot on your bench that you still have to believe in because they'll win you three or four games over the course of their career. This young guy's really improved from year one to year two. We talked about the difference in shooting for Rutgers first to second half. You know, the energy that Mike Rice brings to the table is very reminiscent of what Greg Schiano does with the football program and just the fire that he brought to the program early on. Now, they haven't been as good as they were two years ago, but still a turnaround job that many thought could never happen at Rutgers. Can it happen with men's basketball? Oh, I don't think there's any question, Fran. I mean, this, and this guy has said, I needed a football AD because of the energy and passion I bring. Some guys, some ADs, some presidents maybe not comfortable with how I am on the sideline. Well, he's got a strong AD in Tim Pernetti, obviously, a former Rutgers football player who understands that exact mentality. And when you're building a program like Rutgers, you got to be willing to punch Jim Calhoun in the nose and Jim Beheim and some of those guys who are Hall of Fame coaches. Not literally, obviously, but figuratively. Loose ball. Bodies on the floor, and it'll be a held ball that will stay. Rutgers basketball as Mitchell's going to come back in now with his third foul or with three fouls. Some of the energy we're talking about here during the last possession. Keep an eye on Mike Rice. All you need to know about this guy is the day before his wedding, he's playing four on four pickup basketball and he put his father's tooth out. <laughs> he had to get rushed to the dentist to get it put back in. Well, listen, that's not as bad as it sounds because if you know Mike Rice Sr., he probably deserved it, okay? <laughs> okay. But he needs those teeth for, for TV. He's a that's broadcaster right. yeah. with a blazer. Yep. And a, and a former very good coach. Yep. Turnover there by Rutgers. I love the story that Mike Rice Sr. Is, is probably the only, maybe not the only, but certainly one of those broadcasters in NBA history that got ejected from a game yeah. running his mouth at Steve Jabby. Steve Jabby <laughs> tossed him. That's the old coach. And his zone. They're staying in the zone. Dave, remember how much success they had in the first half with this. Hardy with the pass. Kennedy is fouled and will go to the line. Now, this is something that uh, Coach Lavin touched on when Beth interviewed him at the half, was doing a better job attacking the zone. And one of the principles, dribble penetration, ball reversal, sneak behind the defense, Fran. That's really good execution. Absolutely. You attack the zone from the inside out and not the other way. And when you can get the ball to the middle of the lane, whether it's the dribble or the pass, you're going to get good looks. 
Fall on Poole is his third. Third team fall on Rutgers. And Kennedy is 78% free throw shooter at the line. You know what you like about D.J. Kennedy? He played high school basketball with DeWan Blair in Pittsburgh. Was obviously much more lightly recorded because Pittsburgh didn't even recruit D.J. Kennedy. But he wanted to play in the Big East. And you can think of all the ups and downs he suffered through over three and a half years. And now the fruits of his labor are about to pay off. Maybe nobody has sacrificed more because a year ago he led him the points, rebounds, assists, steals, and three-point percentage. Mm. But as you said, the mindset has been let's win games. Exactly. For the first time in our career, let's just win, baby. Back to a six-point lead for St. John's at the 14-minute mark. Winner to play Syracuse in the quarters tomorrow. Watch how they pressure now. Beatty with the floater. Offensive rebound by Poole. Can't put it back. There's Baruta. He missed. Everybody missing for Rutgers underneath the hoop. Here's Evans, and he walked. How frustrated are you, Franny? And Beth Mowens talked to Mike Rice at the half. He said, we're doing the job of getting extra shots. We're just not capitalizing. So how frustrating is that? You know, you're not as frustrated as you think because, they, let's face it, they've been up and down all year. And to be in this situation where they're down six with 13 to go, what you're preaching is, guys, if we keep it close, we'll make a few plays. Jonathan Mitchell, Beatty, let's just keep hanging around. Don't get frustrated. We're going to get our chance. So if anything, the pressure falls the team that's supposed to win. Everybody knows St. John's supposed to win. For Rutgers right now, they're playing with house money. Just keep it close. Baruta inside. This time he's able to finish his first points of the game. How about the two freshmen hooking up? Austin Carroll, Baruta, two guys that'll grow in prominence in this program. Ruta averaging 13 points per game over his last seven. Well, they need him to score. Floater by Hardy. Farrell keeping it alive. Lost the ball. Kennedy tracks. Can't hit. Brownlee. Kennedy couldn't handle the pass. Rutgers ball. And out of control is Coburn. He lost it on the floor. Great save. And Brownlee ahead of the pass. It was Booth who got on the floor and then made a great look down court to the streaking Brownlee for the jam. He had three plays in the first half, which ignited St. John's, got him some easy looks. And that time, the hustle of Malik Booth. Remember, this is a young guy that grew up in New York City, Christ the King High School. You think of all the great point guards like Eric Barkley, Speedy Claxton, Derek Phelps, Floyd Reeves. This young guy knows what it's like to put your heart and soul out there for the Johnnies. Brownlee now with 11 points. Booth hit a big shot earlier against Connecticut at halftime, banking in a three at the buzzer that gave them some momentum going to the second half. St. John's won that game, one of five wins here at the Garden against ranked teams. That's my favorite sign. I love that. <laughs> Lavinwood. Lavinwood. He's no longer in Hollywood. He's in Lavinwood. But he knows where every good sushi place is in yeah. Soho. Try back <laughs> But look at how hard Malik Booth is pressuring the basketball. Every pass is challenged. Look at the ball pressure. See how they keep it on the side like you pointed out before, Doris? That's called a sideline pin right there. Baruta with the catch call for the offensive foul. So three on Baruta, three on Mitchell. And the 14 foul and a half. St. John's by six. Malik Booth with the great hustle on the floor. Doesn't travel, finds Brownlee. And St. John's trying to move on to the quarterfinals to play Syracuse, clinging to a six-point lead at the 12-minute mark. Hi, I'm 
Welcome back to Madison Square Garden, our favorite mascot. St. John's on top by six as we look at our Reese's perfect play. Well, it doesn't matter, guys, if they're in man or zone because sometimes you can't tell the difference. But there are certain principles. This is called a sideline pin. Watch Paris Horn, maybe the best perimeter defender. He's not going to let the ball come back to the middle. He's going to pin it on the sideline, and Baruta runs over the defender. Great ball pressure and outstanding use of what Mike Dunlap has been teaching these guys defensively all season long. And you wonder if he's just complaining about where the charge was taken. There's no restricted circle. Obviously, you can see it was inside the restricted circle of the NBA. I'll tell you this. If I need a head coach, I'm looking at Mike Dunlap. There's no question he's already been a successful head coach. Won a couple national titles at Division II, NBA experience. Now you can make a comparison between Tom Thibodeau in the NBA and Mr. Dunlap. Yep. Thibodeau might be the coach of the year in the NBA. Burrell inside gets the basket. The lead is eight for St. John. And remember this, guys. Doc Rivers hired him and turned the defense over to Tom Thibodeau. It takes a great strength of character to say as a head coach, hey, you take it. I'll back you. Let's just get it done every day in practice. That's correct. Same with Lab. It's the point I made. He was confident enough in himself to hire outstanding people around him. Problem with Doc is now Thibodeau's coaching the Bulls, and they might overtake <laughs> yeah. the Celtics for the number one seed. <laughs> well, you look at Rico Hines, who played for for uh, Steve Lavin at UCLA, Tony Childs, who is a tremendous high school and college player here in New York City, Mo Hicks, former coach at Rice, very diverse coaching staff. And Katie, uh, that's right. Special assistant advisor to the head coach, Steve Lavin got a start for Katie as a GA at Purdue. Shot clock down to five. Miller looking for his first field goal, and Baruta pushed from behind as he got the rebound. When you think about Tom Thibodeau, and I, this is something that the best coaches to me do. Uh, and Joe Kim Noah talked a little bit about it. Tom Thibodeau did not take the easy way up the coaching ranks. He spent his summer in the gym in Chicago with his players. When you invest in them and they understand that you're about making them better on and off the floor, then they will be invested in you. Evans back on the floor with placing Brownlee. Foul was on Burrell, his second, third on St. John's. Remember, Jamie Dixon was a, an assistant for yeah. Ben Holland for a long time when, when he got the job. People in basketball knew who he was, but he wasn't a household name. And look at how he's continued to have success with that program. Well, remember, yeah, well, I was going to say, Doris, Jamie Dixon played at TCU, and they didn't hire him. Wright State didn't hire him. Pittsburgh hired him. It wasn't a popular choice at that time. And who is Rutgers modeling their program after? Pittsburgh. Booth finds Evans, reverse layup is good. Quietly, Malik Booth has had a great effect on this game because of his energy on both ends of the floor. Yeah, five assists, no points. Horn with a steal, and then fouled by Beatty. Fifth on Rutgers, two on Beatty. We mentioned. Jamie Dixon in Pittsburgh. Mike Rice is a Pitt native and a one-time assistant coach, 2006-2007, before getting the Robert Morris job, which is in Pittsburgh. Of course, he hired, he recruited guys like Bradley Wanamaker, Nasir Robinson, and Trayvon Woodall. Court feed the horn. I was wondering as we watch it, Rutgers has been close a few times, but, but do they have enough as Booth scores his first point? And St. John's extends the lead to 10. Well, I think the problem for Rutgers right now is that St. John's is pressure, especially with 10 guys, Doris, and Rutgers playing yesterday. Pressure can be cumulative. You may not get a lot of turnovers early, but you start to ratchet it up, keep the bodies fresh, and it starts to pay off. Horn just picked up his third foul as Beatty misfires. Mitchell with the rebound. Here's Mitchell in the corner. Spins out on the three. 
Hardy with a pull-up two. Brick that one badly. Long rebound. Contact. No foul called. And it's going to be an easy one on the other end for Coburn. Under nine to play. Game two of four here in day two of the 2011 Big East Championship. Hardy had one. Team advance to the quarters. That was UConn. Hardy trying to get St. John's there as the lead is back to 10. I don't know why he opened up that foot. I mean, you just gave up the baseline because your foot was down. That left foot was down on the defender. That's an invitation to Dwight Hardy. Watch the left foot of the red jersey because he's going to, it's it's straight down. It's an invitation and there's no help. And that's an easy bucket. That might be as easy a play as you'll get from Dwight Hardy. Yep, you see, nobody rotates over. Allows him to get to the rim. You know, back in back in 1989, 90, Boo Harvey electrified New York City. This kid has a lot of Boo Harvey in him. The ability to go from the playground to the Big East. What a season. Oh, well, you mentioned earlier that Mike Rice coached at Robert Morris. You can see them tonight in the Northeast Championship. Rice took them to the NCAA tournament twice. They're looking to get there again tonight if they can beat Long Island. Then at 9 Eastern on ESPN2, it is Montana and Northern Colorado for the Big Sky title. Number 55, Gilbertus Garuda. We'll represent Robert yep. Morris, Moon Township, PA. Probably the only guy in the garden with a Robert Morris t-shirt. Maybe the only guy in New York. <laughs> There's Mitchell. He's been in foul trouble for a good part of this game. Just eight points. Jumper won't drop for Poole. Evans with a rebound. Approaching eight minutes to go. St. John's with the ball, leading by ten. Here's Burrell under the hoop. Tried to throw it off for Ruda. Did a good job eluding that. Beatty in transition, no, but he'll go to the line. Fifth team foul on St. John's. And on Booth, his third. What's it going to take, guys, for Rutgers? Because we've seen him get close, but not able to get over the hump and tie the game or take the lead. You got to make almost every shot here, but and I'm not I'm, I'm not joking about that. They don't. Their defense doesn't turn you over, so that they can't rely on that. So they've got to be very proficient. They got to keep St. John's from scoring, and they got to keep attacking, and they got to hope to make some shots. And we've seen stretches of that, but they don't have enough answers. Uh, to go to. They don't have a go to guy on this team like Dwight Hardy. Well, let's be frank. They're, they're, they're outclassed in terms of talent. They're, they're generally undermanned and outsized on a nightly basis. And given what they're, you know, what they've got at their disposal, I think Mike Rice has done an extraordinary job. And if they lose, they'll, they'll finish two games under 500. And Mike Rice has said he will not take a bid to the CBI, which is one of those uh, postseason uh, tournaments, if they're under 500. Well, you can see that the Rutgers team, especially with that recruiting class coming in to watch next year and beyond in the Big East. You got Kevin Willard trying to clean things up there at Seton Hall. If they get that turnaround, you have three quality teams in the New York area. Along with, of course, the team upstate, Syracuse. Hardy lost the handle. Got it back. Shot clock at four. Brownlee. Rebound Evans. Had it blocked. Baruta. Now Coburn in the four court. Miller touch pass. Baruta slam. Back to a six point game. Well, you know one thing about Mike Rice's club. We've seen it over the last couple days and most of the season. They keep coming at you. Switching defense has really bothered St. John's the last few possessions. One through four, they just switch red jerseys. Shot clock inside of 10. Booth leaves it for Kennedy, blocked by Baruda, who has the ball. 
And he stepped it up here in the last couple of minutes on both ends for Rutgers. Garuda sets the screen for Coburn. Carroll spots off. Two strong Baruta. with a tip by Baruta. He and Miller were both there, and it's a four-point game. 2,400 seconds in a basketball game, and the mission for Rutgers has been you fight for every single second. They do not want this season to end. And just like yesterday against Seton Hall, who had a six to eight point advantage much of the way, these Scarlet Knights keep fighting, and their head coach is in their face. Rutgers fans enjoy it every single second of it, because when guys lay it on the line and give you everything they've got, you can do nothing but admire it. The last couple of hoops by the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Baruta, no doubt, around the rim. And the chip in on the next possession. They are working nice and soft by Mr. Carroll on the rim. Just work for inside position. Baruta or Miller, doesn't matter. Uh, if you're St. John's right now, you don't watch Mike Rice as he reacts. You don't want to put this game on ice. They've had the tendency the last couple possessions to run the clock down to a point where they really couldn't get a good look. Ruta on the bench for now. Mike Rice keeps the bench fired up as well as the guys on the floor. St. John's ball to lead down to four as we approach the six-minute mark. Syracuse awaits the winner of this game in the quarters tomorrow. Watch what they'll do now. Anytime there's a cut and two, gun, two come together, there'll be switches. And they're trying to close off the lane right now. All Brownlee to do there, not to travel and pick up that pivot foot. Brownlee gets the bounce in the paint. Tell you, that's a fear of a lot of Big East teams. Brownlee off the bounce. Well, that's good coaching because right out of the timeout, they needed somebody to go to, and they went to Brownlee. 11 and a half for Brownlee. In the late game, I said it early in the second half, when it's close, they go through Hardy and Brownlee, and both guys have managed late game situations. Three-point opportunity for Austin Johnson. Take a look at this. James Beatty kind of looked like Dwayne Gretzky behind the net. He got stuck behind the net, but he's a senior. He found the big fella. The big fella going to work. You're not going home across that bridge just yet, Rutgers. The Big Championship is presented by American Eagle Outfitters. Live your life in AE jeans. And in part by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. Back at MSG where Rutgers is hanging around down just four to St. John's with five and a half to go and this has been a Scarlet Knight team motivated by the energy of their head coach Mike Rice and also the story of their assistant Jim Carr, whose two and a half year old son Braden has been battling for his life for a few months after cardiac arrest and a battle with uh, epilepsy. They're hoping his condition continues to improve so they can send him to a hospital in New Brunswick closer to campus. And he, uh, yesterday at uh, the pregame meal, pulled out a piece of paper, read the timeline of all that his son had been through, trying to get his team to focus. And three point play for Johnson. And his message was so many. Doctors and medical professionals have counted Braden out just like we've been counted out. You've got 2,400 seconds to keep your season alive. Fight with the spirit my son has fought with. And that's exactly what they've done over two days at the world's most famous arena. It's Seton Hall in overtime yesterday on a 9-2 run here. And St. John's shot clock is down to seven as Kennedy fires and hits a big last four possessions three of them have gone down to the bottom of the clock and you want seniors to take over and of course St. John's has a lot of them Colburn hits an open Mitchell Unable to hit the three, but the tip goes with the left hand, Dane Miller. Case in point, you didn't get locked into the sideline. You, you were good with the basketball. You got reversal, and just like you said in the first half, Brent, if you're solid, you can find good shots against St. John's defense. 
You have to weather the storm, no pun intended, of every ball pressure situation. That was the first basket for Miller in this game. He'd been averaging about 12 points per contest over his last four. Evans on the drive. We've seen him do that a couple times. Now, now, so to me, that's got to either be a block or a charge. You can't be running people over with no whistle. Evans, like St. John's first game of the Big East tournament last year, having a great game at 19 and 10 against Connecticut last year as 11 and 9 so far in this game. Johnson underneath, lost it. Kennedy picks it up. Numbers for St. John's if they hurry. Evans finds Horn underneath. Oh, what a play by Mitchell to block it. Dane Miller in transition, leaning in, somehow avoided the defender to score. He attacked the body of the defender. That's what he was looking to do. That cross step, that Manu Ginobili come across the body of the defender. Give him no chance defensively. Back to a four-point game as we near the three-minute mark. Syracuse awaits the winner of this game tomorrow. Brownlee strip, and it's Rutgers' ball. And if you're a player, how can you not feed off the energy of your head coach? He just looked at him and said, you got to fight, and they are fighting with everything they've got left. 309, can they stay on the New York side? Jersey boys. Today's telecast from New York City available in 3D on ESPN 3D, brought to you by Sony, as is every game of the 2011 Big East Championship, where the Jersey Boys across the river here in the garden trying to hang on and knock off St. John's. They're down just four. Putbacks by Miller and Johnson, and then Miller in transition. Rutgers was down double figures, but the energy of Mike Rice rubbing off on his players. They are fighting hard here in New York to advance to the quarterfinals. Rutgers shooting 50%. This half, but only 36% for the game. St. John's 49% for the game, but the deficit for Rutgers is where it was at halftime. Four points. This is what you like about St. John's. Rutgers trying to seize the momentum. They come out and try to pressure. They're not going to change their style that's worked for them all season. Here's Beatty with the floater. Can't bake it in. Baruta is right there. We got a two-point contest. And now you start to feel the pressure. You say, John, boy, you're huh? supposed to win this basketball game. You're number 18 in the country. This is how you create an upset. You just get your team to realize that the longer the game goes that we stay in it, the more St. John's will get tighter. And Hardy has struggled. 5 of 14. He had one of his worst shooting games during the regular season against Rutgers. His booth has it stripped. It's loose. It will stay St. John's ball according to the possession arrow. The shot clock is at 10. But Hardy just 5 of 14 from the field, 0 for 3 from 3. He was 5 of 13 in the first meeting, 1 of 5 from 3. And outside 5 feet today, he doesn't have a bucket. What are we doing, Dwight Howard or Dwight Hardy? <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, guys that grow up in a schoolyard with metal backboards and no nets, they usually are good at getting in, into the lane and scoring. i got to give Dwight Howard some credit now. He's been better. I was just teasing, <laughs> Dwight. You have had an MVP-level season. Here's Hardy. And he still doesn't have a point from outside five feet. Rutgers can tie or take the lead as we reach the two-minute mark here at the Garden. Baruta has got five offensive rebounds in the ball right now. Giving it up to Miller, turning on Hardy. No. Wow. Out of bounds, Rutgers will keep. Boy, very nearly and over the back on Mr. Baruta. <laughs> Real close. And that would have been number four. Remember, he fouled out yesterday because of a contact technical foul that was called late. Shot clock. Is at 10 as Beatty holds out near midcourt. Miller into the lane. Floater won't go. He missed twice on this possession and then commits a foul. 
And that is their, no, that's just their sixth. Rutgers 16 foul, so next foul either way, and you start shooting to free throws. Is that what you wanted if you were Mike Rice on that possession? I think so. You know what? Let's face it, Dane Miller got into the lane. It was contact, got a good shot at the rim, and that clock was running down. Meanwhile, St. John's had turned it over 14 times in this game. They came in number one in the Big East among the nation's leaders in turnover margin. But not a good day offensively in terms of turnovers. They have shot the ball well. They got the ball in a two-point lead, about 90 seconds left. This is an offense St. John's runs. It's kind of like Notre Dame's burn offense. Use the clock, melt it, and then let's run it down, get it to Hardy. Hardy at midcourt. Under 10 to shoot. The screen from Brownlee. Hardy taking it to the goal. Contact. Got his own miss. Can't put it in. Loose ball. It's going to Rutgers. Now you knew that was coming because late game, it's always ball screen with Brownlee and Hardy. This is what they do. Did they get the call right is the question. Looked like Baruta knocked it out uh, of bounds, right? They're sure, giving it to I, Rutgers. Yep. I thought it was Kennedy, but I like the idea that Rutgers converged on the drive, and what they're doing now is they're gang rebounding. Where do you go here, guys, if you're Rutgers? Well, yesterday they went through Mitchell. They, they let Beatty and Coburn try to get in the lane and then through Mitchell. Oh, and Coburn nice. blows by Hardy for the tie, and now a chance for the lead. A foul is called. <laughs> Cardinal mistake when there's a ball screen. Drive your man to the ball screen. Don't peek because so long. That happened last night in the Villanova game. Dominique Cheek did not force Anthony Crater to the ball screen. Fourth foul on Paris Horn. First tie since the beginning of the game. Rutgers on a Colburn free throw can take the lead. Now keep in mind, Colburn hit some free throws late yesterday, but against Providence, their last regular season game, he felt he cost him the game. He missed a late free throw and shoots under 50% from the line in the final three minutes of game. So this is a big one coming up. They met once during the regular season. That one went down to the wire. It was February 2nd at Carneseca Arena. Justin Brownlee, despite a fiberglass splint on his left hand because of a thumb injury with four seconds left, it's the game-winning shot as St. John survives 58-56. Well, one good thing right now for Rutgers, even if Mike Cobra misses this free throw, it's a situation where even if, if St. John's doesn't shoot it quick, Doris, they're likely to get the last possession of this game. So they, they have a ch real chance here because with 57 seconds, St. John's is going to have to shoot the ball and give Rutgers a final chance to score and maybe win this ball game. And if you've watched St. John's in any close game, you know exactly what you're defending against. You're going to defend against a ball screen typically on the right-hand side of the floor with Brownlee and Hardy in that screen and roll situation. And oftentimes, Hardy wants to drive right. Pick and pop. you got to be careful of the pick and pop yep. with Brownlee. I make them shoot jump shots. Yeah. Here. You know, we're gonna, yeah. if I'm coaching right now, we're keeping Dwight Hardy out of the lane, and we're going to roll the dice and make someone hit a jump shot. Coburn shooting the free throw to give Rutgers its first lead since it was 3-2. to two. Got it. Keep in mind, Rutgers has won multiple games at the Big East Tournament only one time back in 1998. They're a minute away from advancing to the quarterfinals. With six minutes to go, guys, I mentioned that St. John's put this game on ice and stopped really looking to score, and I think that's what's happened. Their 10-point lead is now a one-point deficit. Hardy into Baruta, blocking foul call. That's the 17 foul, fourth on Baruta. Now you send the fifth best free throw shooter in the Big East to the line for a one and one. So you set him up off the stagger screen and you just step out and yep. Rice is not mad at the officials. This is a mistake. Now nah, Baruta's got to get away from the body there. There's no way Baruta needs to be that far away from the basket showing on the screen. <laughs> He's got the look of like, what the heck am I doing coaching? <laughs> His dad's gig, broadcasting a lot easier. Hardy got the first one. First point in three and a half minutes. 
for St. John's. And Burrell will check in, replacing Kennedy. Rutgers with two timeouts. St. John's with one. Again, Hardy struggling against Rutgers from the field, trying to hit another key free throw to give St. John's the lead back. Red Storm by a point. About a two-second difference between game and shot clock. If they don't get what they want, I'd take a timeout. Here's Miller into the lane, trying to hit the road. Loose ball. Evans pushed his own man, got to the ball, and then was fouled. He wanted the ball so badly, he said, Dwight Hardy, get out of here. I'm getting a hold of it. Now, Evans is only a 56% free throw shooter. Well, Mike Rice has got a lot of confidence in his team, and I like teams who feel they know what they're going to do without calling a timeout, but Dane Miller got caught in the air, should have probably shot that basketball. Timeout Rutgers. Foul was on Beatty, his third. Eighth team foul, so a one-and-one one for Sean Evans. 30 seconds, timeout. It was three of four today at the line. Well, I like the timeout. It gives you a chance to coach, but also makes that free throw shooter think about it, Franny, and you had two. All right, guys, what a game we've had here. Rutgers fighting from 10 down to take the lead, and now St. John's up one, and Evans at the free throw line. So if you're Mike Rice, what are you discussing here? Because you took a timeout there, you still have one left. I think, first of all, you got a guy that shoots below 60%, even though he's three or four for today. So you say, we must get the rebound. There's going to be a miss. We must get the rebound. Then you're either going to be down one, two, or three. 17.7. I'm thinking two-point basket, even if we go down three but if we drive it and there's an open three we take it you must attack right here 17.7 a lot of time winner to play Syracuse tomorrow in the quarterfinals Syracuse the only team to win at the garden this year against St. John's Rutgers trying to become the second Pitt UConn is our first quarterfinal we still have two outstanding second round matchups tonight South Florida coming off the upset win over Nova West Virginia the defending champ Evans hits the front end of the one and one one more free throw coming unlike yesterday Dave if they go up three St. John's if you're Mike Rice it's probably too much time to foul the three-point shooter. And he says he hates it. He doesn't want to have to. So we got a timeout as Evans calmly hits both free throws. Three-point lead. St. John's out of timeouts. Are you still going for two here if you're Rutgers, guys? I am. I am because I think you score, set up your defense, foul again, or maybe drive it, kick it for a wide open three. Doris? I think that if I had Beatty or, or Mitchell on a quick look at a three, I'm, if it's clean, obviously, which is, you haven't had many clean, uncontested looks against St. John's. Obviously, I'm, I'm more of a possessions person, but just because of the way they shot it yesterday late, those two guys, Beatty makes two, Mitchell makes two late. And you don't think Lav fouls here? No, I think there's too much time yeah. because if you foul here, you still are going to be trading possessions. The thing here about going for two is that you know the other team psychologically really doesn't want to foul you, so you're going to get very little resistance to the rim. And when you do contract the defense, now you kick it out for that open three you talked about, Doris. If you're St. John's, do you make them use any clock with a little bit of pressure up the floor? They didn't the last time. Looks like they're going to yeah. here. Now, what Sick. I would do if I were St. John's, because they pressed all year, is try to make it difficult to get it in and then back it off. Beatty has been their best three-point shooter today. He hit three of three at the start of the second half. Mitchell is also a good three-point shooter, and they do foul. So that's going to put Coburn on the line. Now, again, Coburn has had his problem shooting free throws late in games, but not yesterday and not so far today. A one and one. That's the eighth team foul on St. John's. Lab was watching Seton Hall Rutgers yesterday mm -hmm. and no foul. My first thought when he fouled with that much time was Jimmy V. You know, Jimmy V used to come up to foul all the time and put the pressure on the shooter, especially if you got a guy like this who has struggled during the year. 
Right around 50% in the final three minutes of game. 62% on the year. Got the front end of the one and one. Now you try to make this, and then you press, steal, foul in that order. Back within one and only 3.4 seconds went off the clock. And now full court pressure by Rutgers. Knights have a timeout. St. John's out of timeouts. They get into the Hardy. He lost it. It's Rutgers ball. They can win it. How did that happen? Well, Hardy wants it. The pass is hard and he takes his head off it just for a second. He's reacting to where he wants to look at where the defense is on the catch, and he doesn't handle it cleanly. So Rutgers ball. They call their final timeout. They can win it here. They got plenty of time, 13.4. What do you think we'll see from the Knights on this possession? The very first thing you must do in this situation against St. John's is get the ball in cleanly. Before you even think about shooting, you must get it in. That's what Mike Rice is drawing up right there. Once you get it in, get it. If you can't score right away, get it out towards the middle of the floor. And then I think you've got to put it on the deck and drive it to the rim and put the onus on the defense. Coburn was good yesterday against Seton Hall getting the ball into the lane. They are working with a short court there. So your point about getting it in is a good one. You've got to have solid screening to get somebody open. You are pushed up against one side. What a great game and what great inspiration this Rutgers team has taken from the difficulties of assistant coach Jim Carr's son, Braden, who is in a local hospital fighting for his life. This, this is about belief and passion if you're Rutgers because whenever the season ends for Rutgers, a culture has been established that playing hard in this league is what's going to take Rutgers up the tree and climb to the top of this league. <laughs> he tried to cheat a little bit on the inbound to get near the rim. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Burr pushed Coburn out. Away from it. 13.4 left. Neither team with a timeout. Here's Mitchell. Coburn with 10. Coburn leans in. No. Bradley rebounds and is fouled by Coburn with 7.3 left. Now there's still time left, even if he makes the free throws. Was that what you wanted if you're Mike Rice? I'm not sure if you want him forcing that shot. He wanted to force contact. Take a look. But because they went so quickly, they're still going to get another possession. Watch. That's a, you know, that's a call that's not going to be made. See, that's violating the principle of verticality if there's contact with the, with the movement of the arms. Brownlee's first foul shot of the game, and he doesn't hit the front end of the one and one. It's out of bounds off Rutgers. 5.5 left, that's, St. John's ball. That's an over the back call right there. That is a foul. That's what Mike Rice Take was a saying. Look. I thought it was over the back as well. That's a foul right there on this man. That has to be called. You don't let players decide the game in the sense that if he fouls, it's a foul. Kennedy fouled by Miller, and so D.J. Kennedy, a 78% free throw shooter, will shoot two because Rutgers now committing a 10-team foul. There's still 4.9 left. Time to get down the floor, even if the free throws are good, well, as we take it back to the miss on the other end. A couple of unfriendly whistles, if you might. Well, you see, what bothers me about that is when people say let the players decide it, if a player goes over the back and commits a foul, he is deciding the game. Kennedy misses the first one. So now Rutgers doesn't necessarily need to take a three. Neither team with a timeout. 4.9 on the clock. The horn sounds here right before Kennedy's ready to take the free throw. He made it anyway. And even though a lot of other people were distracted, he wasn't. So it's a two-point lead for St. John's. Rutgers ball, 4.9 left. A two to tie, three to win. Three-quarter court pressure by St. John's. Long pass down court. Ruta caught it. Turnover. St. John's survives. Wait, he just threw the ball out of bounds. There was still time on the clock. Looked like there should have been time maybe on the clock or maybe even a 
to travel when St. John's got the ball, but there was no whistle and the game's over. Am I wrong? No, no, you're not wrong. I had a hard time with the play on the over the back because this was a really hard played game. Well, first of all, why would you throw it the length of the floor when you have five seconds left? You can still get it in the backboard, right? Well, you can, but the further up the floor you catch this thing, the easier the shot's going to be, and that was his thinking. Watch Brownlee here with two seconds left. Three He's steps, out of bounds. and he, he stepped, stepped out of bounds. Out before he passed it with about one Well, he traveled, too. He turned it over with one second left and then threw it out of bounds, but there was no call, and Rutgers loses. Look at this. You're 1.7. He's out of bounds. They stopped officiating this basketball game. Let's see. One, I, two. My, he's out of bounds. Three steps, what, and then he throws it. What happened, Dave, in my opinion, is starting with the drive by Coburn, they lost their composure, the officials, because that may or may not have been a foul call, but the over the back on that end seemed to be, and right here, I'm not sure what you've got, but you've got chaos and confusion. Well, he's here. out of bounds. There's 1.7 on the clock, right in front of Steve Lavin, too, and Lavin just put his hands down, not looking at it, Steve. and then he throws the ball out of bounds into the stands, and there was still time on the clock. Before this game ended, Steve was walking up the sideline. I think that's what confused his players. Like, he was heading to shake the hands of Mike Rice, who's incensed and should be. This is an incredibly disappointing ending. He wanted a foul call. I don't know that he even realized that there was a turnover by yep. St. John's, but there should have been 1.7 left, and Rutgers getting the ball still with a chance to tie with a two or win with a three. Beth Mullins is standing by with Steve Lavin. All right, thank you very much, guys. Well, Coach Lavin, apparently there was still some time left on the clock when the ball was jettisoned off the floor. Uh, was there any talk about that coming through the uh, handshake line here about that? I'm not sure. You know, it was kind of chaotic and uh, little Keystone cops there at the end. And I know we were out of timeouts, uh, usually a situation I'm not in, but uh, just fortunate to get the win. And Rutgers uh, really played their fannies off and thought both teams just showed a lot of grit. It's the Big East tournament. You could see what's at stake. And uh, we were fortunate. Felt like I just saw a ghost in the garden. Once again, you have the seniors, and they played with some composure for the most part in this yeah. second half, yeah. despite losing the 10 point lead. What does that say about this group once again in a tight spot? You know, I just love this group. Uh, I've said it before, we inherited these kids from Norm Roberts, and to be able to participate in this breakthrough season for them is really what it's all about. That's the most gratifying part, and there's been different, you know, intersections or junctures that are special, and this is another one to get a Big East uh, tournament win. They're not easy in any conference in the country. Uh, throw all the records out the window. Uh, it's, it's madness. It's March. You mentioned a ghost of the garden. Syracuse was very real when they came in here and beat you by 17 earlier this year. What do you have to do better tomorrow? Boy, you know, they were hitting on all cylinders. I think still undefeated, if I'm not mistaken, when we played them. Uh, Jim Beheim, a Hall of Fame coach with 900 wins or something near that, that number. So, you know, they're well prepared. We're going to have to uh, rebound against Syracuse and be patient, uh, but also be aggressive. And that's a fine line against their zone. You know, beat it down the floor if we can and transition off some stops and then get it to the short corner of the high post, try and screen it some. But the guy's a master. He's a reason he's in the Hall of Fame. So it's not as though we're going to out-coach him tomorrow. We just better play at a high level. All right. Thank you very much, Steve. Okay. Take care. All right, Dave? Beth. Well, certainly a miss here by the officials, though, that would have given the ball back to Rutgers with time on the clock but st john's advances will play syracuse the only team to win the garden against st john's that's the second game quarter final action tomorrow pit uconn to tip things off i suppose the least egregious of what transpired late was the first disappointing call if you're mike rice it was the dribble drive as we anticipated by mike coburn i did think this was a foul friend because he violates the principle of verticality he clearly has elbow so i thought that was the first missed call now on the free throw situation watch the red jersey looks like uh, Mitchell he's gonna go flying because of the push in the back okay to me that's an over the back call and then the end of the game situation which to me Doris I'm still trying to figure this all out you know the clock is running was there a whistle was there no whistle obviously you got a guy traveling 
He's and out stepping out of bounds. He's out of bounds with out of bounds. 1.6 at the very minimum. I thought it was 1.7. Yeah. So it was like they stopped officiating. It was the bizarrest ending to a game I've ever seen. This is why, Dave, this is why you make a call when you see it. Yeah. If, it's a, if it's an over-the-back call, you make the call. It doesn't matter who it goes against. Both of these teams deserve to win because they played hard. But when people tell me that players, you should let the players decide the game, I totally agree. So when you get pushed in the back, you have decided the game on the defensive end by fouling. And I think that, quite frankly, that this crew lost its composure at the very end of the game. And it's heartbreaking because for St. John's, we're going to have a monster game tomorrow with Syracuse. But Rutgers deserved better in that last 20 seconds. Well, and again, the end was so strange. And as Doris said, uh, Steve Lavis starts walking towards midcourt. And maybe that's why Brownlee stopped playing. Traveled, stepped out of bounds, threw the ball into the stands with time still on the clock. Perhaps he was confused. But in the end, it doesn't matter. St. John's is moving on to play Syracuse in what should be a great atmosphere at the Garden tomorrow. 65-63, St. John's beats Rutgers. For Doris Burke, Fran Fraschilla, our entire crew, I'm Dave Pash. And out of the studio, Mike Tirico, Doug Gottlieb, Jay Williams. Okay, guys, thank you. Jim Roman's burning here in a second. And a great job by all you guys, especially Dave, who called that live that he thought he stepped out of bounds. I bring that point up because if Dave can call that live while he's calling the play, one of the three officials, two of them veterans who have worked Final Fours, need to see that. Uh, not only that, but they need to not officiate anymore in the Big East tournament this year. They, they move on based on their performance. Their performance at the end of the game was pathetic. Jim Burr, Tim Higgins, they should not advance. You cannot blow a game and not go to the monitor at the end of the game, which by rule they can't least go to the monitor they didn't do it doesn't for mean they clock can, error for, for, yeah. for a clock error right. okay doesn't mean doesn't mean that they can never officiate again but you you advance based on your performance uh, I agree I think it's horrible that the refs couldn't keep their composure towards the end of a game situation at at least Rutgers deserved a chance at 1.6 sure. seconds left to have a shot at it no doubt a lot of people will have a business lunch in New York because they'll be for Syracuse St. Yeah. John's Pitt Kent, UConn on the front end tomorrow afternoon Colorado is the second to last team in according to Joe on Sports Center Right now, we go to the Big East tournament and a controversial ending. St. John's holding on to beat Rutgers 65-63 in the second game at Madison Square Garden. It was a strange play, though, to end it. It has Rutgers boiling. There appeared to be time left on the clock when the St. John's player ran out of bounds. Red Storm, though, will face Syracuse tomorrow in the quarters. Connecticut advancing in the tournament. Fails to Rutgers. You're out of the Big East tournament in controversial fashion. St. John's up too late. Justin Brownlee steals the ball to seal the win, but... Steps out of, out of bounds with 1.7 seconds left and then launches the ball. Inexplicably, the referees just ran the clock out so Rutgers did not get a final chance at the win. I can explain it. Fix it for the New York school. How about that? I hope so. I'm New York sure schools you do. deserve it. Time to find out what we